welcome to Corpus Christi, Texas. We're at AMF Island Bowl, the site of today's PBA National Resident Pro Championship. I'm Richard Oliver, along with legendary PBA Hall of Famer Dick Weber. And Dick, three days of competition. It's come down to this. Four men gunning for the PBA National Resident Pro Championship. Uh, so right, uh, Rich. And uh, we had 72 bowlers representing 72, uh, seven of the regions. And uh, on top of that, this is our tournament champions of all the regions. So as you say, we're down to the final four, and it's going to be a very exciting uh, uh, event because we have Lenny Bla Blakely uh, uh, leading the uh, pack with 229 average, and he's the guy to beat. And it is, as you say, four men left. It's a mix of the old and the new. Blakey is the uh, the new, and there is some experience trying to gun him down. That's for sure. Dennis Aran's been on TV before and national TV, and uh, he's the one to look out for also. But uh, I, I pick uh, Lenny Blakey uh, to win. Blakey's the guy to be today at the National Resident Pro Championship. We've got all that, that action and more when we come back after these messages. Just one more strike for a 300 game. For the inside track on your favorite bowlers, become part of the PBA Fan Club. All fan club members receive the PBA Media Guide and pro programs along with your official membership card. Also, for a limited time only, this Millionaire's Club poster is included. So don't wait, call today. Call 1-800-299-4PBA for your membership in the PBA Fan Club. Where once there was one ninja, now there are three. The original ninja, the first AMF ball to harness the power and hook of reactive thane cover stock. The smooth arcing ninja master, a masterful balance of power and control. And the ninja fury, unrestrained in its extraordinary hook and incredible power. The new ninja fighting force from AMF. The power to improve your individual style. Jeff Rickles with a, uh, with a great start in the first game. One of five bowlers to qualify for these finals. And Dick, as you say, that's certainly not the way you want to start. Uh, you want to make a statement right away, and Jeff Rickles has to take note of that and say, I am in command from the, uh, from the very beginning. Well, knowing uh, Jeff Rickles from our little match before, uh, he had five strikes on lane 30 here, so. Now, of course, he's in a situation here, Dick, where he has to uh, keep command by picking up this uh, tough 10 pin here. Yeah, you know, everybody's afraid of the 10 pin here, but uh, as we see uh, Jeff uh, rolling the ball up around the second arrow, 10th board from the right gutter, and uh, leaving the half 10, as we call it, where the six pin sits in the gutter. Jeff, the number five qualifier here in our TV step ladder. He does pick up the 10 pin. Good point there, uh, Rich, where, uh, you know, a lot of uh, bowlers are afraid of that 10 pin. Now, Jeff didn't throw his normal uh, ball, but uh, he would like the first ball. Mm -hmm. He threw the ball hard and straight and really never tried to hit the ball with the fingers. So a uh, good point for the uh, viewers to make that nasty old 10 pin. <laughs> Pin, but got the strike on that one, so he does take control with the uh, with two marks to lead off after the open by Joe Viscomi. Well, when you watch uh, Rickles here uh, throw his ball in lane 29, even though the ball is a little bit high on the head pin, it still goes to the uh, sideboard, kicks out the 4-7. Ooh, a little book on action, but... Uh, Never hurts. Never, never hurts. hurts. Viscomi certainly needed that, Dick, because what you don't want early on, obviously, with the, uh, the man you're bowling against with two marks, you certainly don't want to get so far down that you're playing catch-up throughout the game. Well, you need those little extra breaks to, uh, to be a, a winner of anything. And uh, 
that was a little break for him, so we'll see if he can take advantage of it. Uh, he was a little bit high on the left lane, uh, 29, so we'll see if he makes a little adjustment here. And he makes that uh, pro adjustment, as we call it. Uh, Nice recovery by Viscomi. He's the number three qualifier. Rickles defeated uh, Jim Polis, 227 to 199. To reach this point in the step ladder, the TV step ladder here at the PBA National Resident Pro Championship at AMF Island Bowl in Corpus Christi. And Dick, he is rolling very well. He rolled well in qualifying all day today, and he certainly is taking command of his game. Uh, here when he needs it most. Jeff's uh, from the Midwest region, which is a, a region of mine, but uh, he rolls the ball well, and he's a good fighter. He has, he's uh, got a lot of confidence in himself, so uh, he'll be tough, as we've, well as Joe Visconti, too. We've described him all day as kind of a showman, and uh, <laughs> he does enjoy the TV lights. Oh, yes. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back after this. We're back in action with Joe Viscomi of North Carolina making his approach here, taking on Jeff Rickles. Oh, there again. Now see, Viscomi hit his pocket and never carried the head pin. Never carried the uh, the sixth uh, pin like the head pin did carry for right-hander Jeff Rickles, where it went to the sideboard and carried. And it's one of those tough breaks. But uh... Dick, we started out at this tournament 72 bowlers, 10 left-handers. We have two in the final four. This is one of them. Well, you know, it's one of those things that uh, where uh, uh, everybody has a, con a little controversy where left-handers have an advantage or right-handers have an advantage. And, and we have such a nice uh, surface here at the uh, AMF Island Bowl that uh, it's uh, no wonder the lefties bowl good and the righties bowl good. So it's just come out that it happened uh, evenly, 50-50. Viscomi 11 and 5 in his 16 game qualifying to lead up to this point. He's bowled 30. This is his 35th game of the tournament. Averaging 226 heading into this game. Uh, again, he's a little bit high leaving the uh, seven pin, uh, the uh, four pin rather. Uh, and uh, it's. Uh, seems like he's just a little bit late with getting the ball to the foul line. And that's just, when he sets it down like that, the ball will hook immediately uh, very early. Viscomi's 37 years old. He's been a member of the PBA for 15 years, 20 regional titles. Nice pick up. And Dick, we were talking earlier, he is one victory away, a PBA regional record uh, victory away of having 21. That would tie him for the record for PBA regional victories. This would count as a regional victory if he could pull this one out. Exactly right, and that shows you how tough of a bowler he is. Again, uh, Rickles uh, hitting a little bit high on that headband, but that's a sign of a good rolling ball. And, uh, and uh, as we watch here, he'll and watch his reaction. Ball, a little bit inside his mark, and there it just stopped and set right there. So and look at this reaction there, Dick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is playing this up. We've got a good crowd here at AMF Island Bowl, and they are really eating up the showmanship that uh, that Rickles is showing here. Almost got the back door there, but uh, those pins stayed. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving the 2 5 spare, which is not really a difficult spare, but he's got to be careful of the hooking lane here. And uh, uh, as we see, he really went out to the uh, far side of the uh, right of his spot and leaving the 2 5. And he's got to watch out for the chop here, mm -hmm. the chopping the 2 straight back off of that 5. 
But there again, you notice that Jeff straightened out his ball, threw the ball extremely hard, and uh, making that spare. And what he's done uh, effectively here is put Joe Viscomi on the defensive on his heels. Viscomi has to continue marking, has to try to play catch up here, and hope that Rickles uh, falters here down the stretch. Uh, set up and making that if he makes a spare he'll be 31 pin, uh, 32 pins down at this uh, particular time as we see the ball rolling down the lane and just leaving that what we call a half seven never got the love tap off of that uh, four pin and so it's certainly difficult here uh, for Viscomi he's got to keep his concentration Dick we talked about this earlier in the week how concentration is everything in this sport and he certainly needs it here. Yes, you got to keep focused all the way. Uh, uh, like you say, the concentration is very, very important. So uh, uh, he's only 31 pins down. He's got four frames to go, and he uh, still has room to uh, uh, put the pressure on Jeff Rickles. But he certainly, at this point, cannot afford an open. And he's got to keep uh, keep his uh, game plan consistent. He's got to be knocking down pins and uh, making sure there are none left standing. Same shot. Come on. Well, he sent the messenger around to get that seven pin, but it never touched the seven pin. So, leaving that half, half uh, seven again. This me a fifth place finish in a PBA regional event earlier this year. He's bowled 10 300 games during his career. Of course, he won't have one here. His wife, Deborah, he's got two kids, Candy and Barbie. Again, these guys are showing you how to make uh, spares uh, by uh, flattening that ball out a little bit, a little bit, not trying to hit the ball to make it hook, and just uh, throwing it hard and straight. Having a little problem with lights here, and <laughs> Rickles <laughs> giving him just another chance to smile, and he's done a lot of that this week, uh, certainly a lot of it today. He's done well in this tournament. 10 and 6 record in qualifying today. And finished fifth, had to beat Sam Zurich to reach the TV stepladder. He's here. He's doing a good job, Dick. Yes, that's correct. And then, you know, now he's uh, 33 pins up at this uh, particular time, 148 in the sixth, and where uh, Joe Visconti has 115 in the uh, sixth. And there is the beautiful strike that uh, Jeff Rickles got on lane 30. There's a distinctive ball here. This, uh, this looks like a jade pearl almost. <laughs> it is a pearl, that's for sure. It's certainly been one for him today, and he's cashed in for. There he does it once again. Uh, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back after these messages. Just one more strike for a 300 game. For the inside track on your favorite bowler, become part of the PBA fan club. All fan club members receive the PBA Media Guide and tour programs along with your official membership card. Also, for a limited time only, this Millionaire's Club poster is included. So don't wait, call today. Call 1-800-299-4PBA for your membership in the PBA Fan Club. Where once there was one ninja, now there are three. The original ninja, the first AMF ball to harness the power and hook of reactive thing cover stock. The smooth, arcing Ninja Master, a masterful balance of power and control. And the Ninja Fury, unrestrained in its extraordinary hook and incredible power. The new Ninja Fighting Force from AMF. The power to improve your individual style. Here's the replay of uh, Jeff Rickles on lane 29, 
going for the double and 10 pins uh, just about in the pit. And here's the reaction of Jeff. Yes, give it to me. <laughs> you know, it's really a shame that Jeff doesn't enjoy bowling much. It's, it's just a shame. He really needs to get a little more enjoyment out of the sport. Here's Viscomi. Of course, he's got to keep marking. He's got to try to keep up. He does it there. Finally gets the seven pin to fall for him there, Dick. Two straight times he had the seven pin standing like an anchor. This time it falls for him. That's for sure. He's got to keep on going, uh, uh, striking. If he uh, follows at any, uh, the ninth or tenth frame here uh, by leaving a pin or so, by, uh, he's practically out of the match. And you could tell he knows that there's concentration etched on his face. <laughs> he knows that he's in trouble right now. This going from, how is that, Albemarle, North Carolina. That's very good, very good. Uh, he just you tell me how to pronounce it. Just guessed it. <laughs> oh, all right. Got a up there, and that was certainly a crucial uh, double for him. You know, we had 16 finalists after we cut our field from 72, and uh, a couple of fellows, uh, like from Melbourne, Florida, Sam Zurich, and here goes Joe Visconti's uh, strike. Oh, the four-pin kicking at 10 to 7 out. Uh, Mr. Rickles is not going to give up. And Dick, how, how discouraging is that for Viscomi, who is doing what he's got to do. He's striking, he's marking when he has to after the unfortunate open to start this game, and to watch Jeff Rickles just keep on rolling. Well, it's a little discouraging. You know, uh, 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 Joe hasn't bowled that bad of a game. He just uh, left a few uh, seven pins here and there, and uh, in fact, three seven pins, and it, it's hurt. He carried those. Oh, he'd have been uh, been right in the match, but uh, now Jeff Rickles gets a little taste of what uh, Viscomi has had to deal with this uh, this game as he leaves the seven pin wobbling in the corner. Uh, Jeff Rickles uh, can pick up the spare, uh, and he'll be shooting a 247 game. Ooh, look at that! <laughs> we said, we're we're gonna get this. The dancing just won't work on that uh, that seven pin. The ten pin might be friendlier though. We do dance on the approach. <laughs> <laughs> and there's that bad ball you talked about. Yes. He took out the hook and uh, just let the ball take care of the uh, take care of the pin. It's a good point for our viewers uh, making spares, uh, especially nowadays with the surfaces that we have and the resin balls that we have. So uh, it's uh, it's it's better to throw the flat ball, the straighter ball, to your spares. And I guess if Jeff could strike here, he'll end up with a 247. Seems to be wired in. Very nice game, 247. And that should just about do it, I would think. Uh, yeah, Joe Viscomi can uh, strike out for uh, 225, uh, and, uh, which is a very nice, great game. Jeff Rickles will now move on to take on Dennis Horan of San Diego, California, our number two qualifier in the TV step ladder. <laughs> Speaking of the other bowlers in our finals, we had Ross Packard from uh, San Jose, California, Rick Berry from uh, Anaheim, California, finished eighth, Mike Cart from Tacoma, Washington, finished ninth, and Corey Groth from Laverne, California, finished tenth. This coming picks up the spare, we have one more ball to go. And again, our number one qualifier, the guy that everyone's keeping an eye on, the young gun from Tacoma, Washington, Lenny Blakey, the number one qualifier. Strong, strong. Well, the Dennis Wren's strong, too. He just doesn't throw the speed that Lenny uh, Blakey does, but uh, it's, it's a matter of how you knock the pins down. Right? That's exactly right. As long <laughs> as they fall down, it doesn't matter. Oh, and there's uh, that's indicative of the kind of game that uh, Joe Viscomi has as the nine pin uh, stays solid as we finish out that ball game. 220, 247 for Jeff Rickles, 203 for Joe Viscomi, and now that means Rickles moves on to face Dennis Horan in our next game in the TV step ladder here at the PBA National Resident Pro Championship.
And that's uh, Dennis Horan and Jeff Rickle shaking hands. We'd like to welcome everyone back to the PBA National Resident Pro Championship at AMF Island Bowl in Corpus Christi, Texas. I'm Richard Oliver with PBA Hall of Famer Dick Weber. Might say that uh, Dennis Rand was a second place qualifier and he has the choice of starting lane so he decided to start on the uh, left lane. Because that's the lane that's been giving, giving the lefties a tough, uh, tough go. And that certainly happened here. What a weird split, Dick. And I know that uh, this one is going to take a little explanation as far as how, this pick, how to pick this up and exactly how this happened. Well, the best way would be uh, hitting the six pin on the, uh, on the right and trying to slide it over to the eight pin and coming forward to get the four pin, which he didn't do. Dennis Rand, the number two qualifier, opens up with an open on lane 29, and that uh, turns the ball over to Jeff Rickles. And Rickles has been red hot. He had to beat Sam Zurich in the final bowl off to get into the top five here on the TV step ladder, and he's been winning ever since, Dick. And winning because of shots like that. Rickles, it's, it's funny, Dick, how when a bowler, like any other sport, gets in his zone, uh, it's just uh, almost don't wake them up because they are absolutely red hot and there's no stopping them. You can see by that uh, little uh, roll there and the reaction here that uh, he is zoned in. And uh, uh, when the player is like that, it, it, it just seems like he just keeps on going, going on. Mm -hmm. You can and, see uh, the confidence. He doesn't take much uh, time on his approach. He's going up there. He knows exactly what he wants to do. And that's exactly what he wants to do. <laughs> And he has two strikes to open this game, and so Dennis Horan is getting a little taste of what uh, Joe Viscomi and certainly what Jim Polos and Sam Zurich have already experienced, and that's a red-hot Jeff Rickles. It certainly is. Here's the play, and that six-pin, this nudges that ten-pin over just like we want it, just to give it the old tap. And Joe Viscomi in the last game against Rickles opened with an open, had to play catch-up the whole game, and here Dennis Horan, the number two qualifier, having to do the same thing, Dick. And that 10 pin, we haven't seen the 10 pin uh, standing up much today. We've seen a lot of the seven pins uh, standing solid, but uh, uh, this is uh, certainly not the way that Dennis Horan had envisioned uh, opening up this, uh, this step ladder semi. There the seven pin, or the five pin went right in front of the 10 pin, and uh, the ball went pretty long for Dennis at that time. Never grabbed like it did on the left lane, so uh, he'll make his adjustment. He's a very good uh, forward to change with speeds and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, with spotting. And what we've noticed this week, Dick, uh, and certainly today in the is part of the 16-man qualifying team, very intense bowler, uh, lots of concentration, uh, but this is a guy who, who takes his game very seriously, and uh, Jeff Rickles is the guy we've seen dancing around and, and uh, really <laughs> seemingly to enjoy himself. Uh, Haran, a very intense, serious bowler. That's for sure, Rich. And, you know, now he'll make a little adjustment with the eyes, and he'll look farther out on the lane for, because he was a little bit high on that first uh, first shot. Mm -hmm. so, oh, oh, a solid nine. A solid nine. And this, uh, so that's two straight shots where he's hit the pocket fairly well and has not gotten the break he needed, Dick. Now, he'll, he'll throw this ball extremely well, naturally, and the ball will come in solid. The, the five pin goes straight back and misses the nine pin. It's just and, like a chop. And it's, it's very difficult to understand that, but the chop five right off the nine is just one of those aggravating things. And they say, yeah, like any other sport, bowling a game of inches, <laughs> and that's certainly the case here. He picks up the spare, but he trails in this match uh, behind the red-hot Jeff Rickles, again, the number five qualifier among our final five here in the National Resident Pro Championship. And Rickles, pardon the pun, is on a very big roll. The old kickaroo off the six pin into the ten pin. <laughs> and you can see uh, Jeff Rickles uh, thanking everyone that he needs to thank for that ball, for that pin uh, going down there at the end when he needed it. Watch the six pin, this bumps the ten pin. Beautiful. He That's just nudged it. And there's a happy, happy ball. <laughs> That's a sign of a good rolling ball. You know, he's kicked the four, uh, the four seven out with a couple of shots of last game. Now he's kicked the ten pin out with the six pin, which is good roll on the ball. that he really uplifted on that ball and that's the reason the ball hooked early on him and Rickles has had the advantage uh, throughout this uh, five-man step ladder to be bowling from ahead from the get-go against everybody he's bowled uh, this is certainly a spare he would love to get 
but what realistically should you be looking for, Dick, uh, here on this kind of a, well, a pickup? He, he made this split once before, uh, the six uh, sliding a six over to the uh, seven, but uh, just didn't miss it that time. But he went for the two pins and uh, tried to take his chance on making the split. So Rickles with an open. We're going to take a short break and be right back. Just one more strike for a 300 game. For the inside track on your favorite bowlers, become part of the PBA Fan Club. All fan club members receive the PBA Media Guide and pro programs along with your official membership card. Also, for a limited time only, this Millionaire's Club poster is included. So don't wait, call it today. Call 1-800-299-4PBA for your membership in the PBA Fan Club. Where once there was one ninja, now there are three. The original ninja, the first AMF ball to harness the power and hook of reactive thing cover stock. The smooth arcing ninja master, a masterful balance of power and control. And the ninja fury, unrestrained in its extraordinary hook and incredible power. The new ninja fighting force from AMF. The power to improve your individual style. Welcome back to the National Resident Pro Championship. This is Dennis Horan of San Diego, California, playing a little catch up against Jeff Rickles. And again, there's the seven pin standing solid for him. And you can see the look on his face, Dick. He is a little bit on the incredulous side right now as to what is happening to him in this match. And here's a replay of it. It just comes in a little bit light, leaving it, setting that four pin in the gutter, not kicking out that seven pin like Rickle did with his six on the 10. Mm -hmm. And he needs this pickup because he can get back in this match in a big hurry if he can pick this ball up. And he does. Jeff Rickles will be playing off an open when he comes back. He opened off a split in the fourth frame. Jeff Rickles up by 19 pins in this match. So uh, Dennis uh, will make another little move. Uh, get, try to get those strikes going. You'll notice when he sets himself up now, he'll get himself set. Now he'll look and he'll look out farther on that lane. Keep that chin up. See, mm -hmm. now he's, that makes him get the ball out on the lane much farther. There he goes. Very good form. And now you see just a little bit of tension on the face of Jeff Rickles now as he steps up to get his ball because for the first time in, in a long time, in at least four games, he is, uh, he's got some catching up to do here because of that split in the last frame, Dick. Yes, he does. Uh, he's he's got to get his momentum back and... Uh, That's the marker, obviously, of a good bowler and a bowler who has reached this level is uh, someone who could come back from a bad uh, break in the previous frame. Well, Jeff knew, uh, knew that he had to get the ball well out in front of him, and he did. He just didn't come up come up on the ball like he did the last shot where he got the split. And he buried that one. He's a little more muted on his reaction this time because he knows that he's not playing from ahead this time. Uh, now it's down to survival in this game against Dennis Horan. See the difference in that ball in the frame before on that same lane? He went even, uh, like a plane landing on a, on a runway. Uh, that shot there, and we'll see it here, it, it's not a big loft. Where before on that lane, he lofted the ball with an uplift, and that's the reason he got the split. Mm -hmm. And there's the reef. Oh, yes. And Give it to me. <laughs> there's a picture that, all, that a lot of bowlers have seen this week as uh, the red-hot Jeff Rickles uh, has reached here the semifinals of this TV stepladder at the National Resident Pro Championship. This is Dennis Horan of San Diego, California. See how he keeps his chin up? 
lot of bowlers don't do that. Oh there we go again, that seven pin. And that seven pin has been sticking a lot we've seen in the last couple of games, Dick. And sure. uh, it's uh, probably the left-handers, obviously, that we're seeing that uh, that plays a lot into it. See, the ball, the ball will go down long, uh, long but it comes in, uh, comes in light. And uh, that sets that uh, four pin into the gutter. And there's disappointment in his face. He didn't like that, and he picks up the seven pin. He's had plenty of practice at it, so he's had no problem there. Horan, 27 years old, nine years a member of the PBA. He's had uh, 16 PBA regional titles, and including one this year. He's always been a tough bowler. I've known him for years, and he's uh, been around uh, some years, and always a tough bowler. He finished second in the Phoenix Open uh, in uh, last year, and or this year in 1993. So. That's on the national tour with the big guys. And had a 300 game yesterday and had a 298 in qualifying today. With shots like that, you can see how that would happen. And certainly the concentration pays off when you're rolling for a 300. Right now, though, he's rolling to try to beat Jeff Rickles in advance to the finals of our National Resident Pro Championship against Lenny Blake in Washington. He had some charge on that ball there. That's Rickles tries to answer back, and he does. Oh, he does. He just buries it. And aside from that one open frame, I tell you what, Dick, Jeff Rickles has been the hottest bowler in this center throughout this afternoon. This is good. Tremendous follow-through. He's got so much confidence in the ball, ending up in the pocket. And he'll oh. show it. <laughs> you know, we really do wish he'd show a little more emotion. I think that would carry him to the top in this game. Zone and it didn't take him long to regain his form after the open frame in the fourth. These bowlers are vying for a $6,000 first prize, and if one of them um, manages to get a 300, certainly we won't see it in this game, but in the next game, a $1,000 bonus to the man who can have a, 1, 000, a uh, 300 game in our TV finals. That's not a bad weekend. No, it'll be all right. There's no way, no justice. I think that uh, Dennis Horan should take that pin home with him and make sure that it never graces any play <laughs> that he bowls on again. It's just, he's doing everything right. This ball's just going a little bit too long for him, and he knows it, and it's just too hard to make that big of a change. He's left one, two, three, three seven pins, and a solid nine, and a swish and ten. So that means he's had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven balls in the pocket and only got two strikes. And I'm assuming Rickles still has the lead in this match? Yes. Oh, there he gets one to fall. The nine pin topples over. And Dennis Horan uh, stays in the match. Jeff Rickles uh, cannot afford to make a mistake here, Dick. We're late in this game. No, you don't want to make a mistake anyway. You want to keep your focus going and, and, and because even though you're pretty far ahead in this match, you still you got a big tough bowler coming on. So and that's exactly what he's trying to do. So Jeff Rickles of Madison, Wisconsin, 31 years old. Eight years as a PBA member. He has 10 regional titles. 21 300 games in his career. And certainly watching today, Dick, you can see how that could happen for a bowler like this who once he gets in the zone and gets consistent he's very tough to beat right rich and you know is i like his personal goal and bowling goals to make dollars <laughs> <laughs> well, he's on his way to making some today and there's another strike and he has finished out strongly he's in the 10th frame now of course he'll get to bowl a little bit more here six thousand dollars to the winner and you may very well be looking at him if uh, if jeff rickles continues to bowl with the confidence and flair that he's bowling with today six thousand dollars to the winner and a trip to akron ohio for the general tire tournament champions so. and and i wonder if you ask these men which would they rather have i think they'd rather go to akron well, yeah, money, but money would be nice to get there on his way to another excellent ball game here and that may have effectively sealed it this jeff jeff is the winner and uh uh, with this uh, strike here, he'll have a 265 game, and that'll give him a 739 series for his three games. Oh, my. Here comes the handshake, and uh, 
certainly Dennis Horan knows that. But Dick, as you pointed out, uh, the pins have been falling for Jeff Rickles. Dennis Horan has not bowled that bad a game. No, he has had pins that have just stuck and would not fall for him. He has not bowled a bad game at all. And, uh, you know, oh, there, there, <laughs> and he applauds for himself. He knows it, it, it's taken a while for that to happen. A little bit too late for him. So many times that we bowlers say, well, we hit the pocket 12 times and we never got a perfect game to 300 game. Then we got only a 2-0 game. But other times we've hit the pocket maybe nine times and got a couple of lucky breaks where we should have got strikes and got the 300 games. Dennis Horan averaged 231 for this tournament. And he closes out very strongly. Average 231, I should say, coming into this ball game, into this match against Jeff Rickles. Average very well. That was the highest among our final five as far as the tournament averages. Rickles averaged 224, Herman with a 231, including the 300. And he doesn't even watch that. It's almost as if he knew the seven pin was going to stick for him. Dennis Horan turns around and walks away. So our winner, 265 for Jeff Rickles, 205 for Dennis Horan. Waiting in the wings, Lenny Blakey of Tacoma, Washington. He was our number one qualifier. And we'll be back for the match between Rickles and Blakey for the National Resident Pro Championship when we come back from these messages. Welcome back to the PBA National Resident Pro Championship at AMF Island Bowl, Corpus Christi, Texas. I'm Richard Oliver with PBA legend Dick Weber. Thanks very much, Rich. Uh, you're taking a, a good look at Lenny Blakey. He's our number one qualifier here at the Resident Pro Championship, and he has elected to bowl first on the left lane, lane 29 here at AMF. We have seen a lot of that this week. He is such a pure bowler, and you talked about certain bowlers have a, having a loft. This this man rolls the ball from the very beginning. He certainly does, and uh, you know he, he picked the lane. As we see his ball rolling uh, rolling down the lane, the left lane, he picked that lane because he wasn't good in practice on it. So it was a smart move on his part. And here's a look we've seen a few times. Jeff Rickles <laughs> remains hot. We have a little delay, of course, between each game. Rickles has not cooled off, coming off a 265, I think, in his semifinal victory over Dennis Horan of San Diego, California. Rickles, the number five qualifier in our TV stepladder. And I tell you, he's number five qualifier. He's been bowling like number one all day. He is a red hot coming in to the final five. His react here, he jogs back. He says, I don't want those pins might just stand back up if I don't get out of the way here. Let's look at this, Dick, and tell us what happened. What, what's this ball? This ball is inside his mark, and it's going to, it's naturally got to go high, and it looks very heavy on the head pin, and the head pin carries out the 4-7. Oh, Ooh, yes. Get down, get down, get down, all of them. Maybe if I make like a tornado, it'll blow them all down, and that's what happened here. And Lenny Blakey gets a good uh, good look at what's been happening to everybody else who's been bowling against Jeff Richards all day. But I tell you what, we've talked a lot. Uh, Lenny Blakey is, uh, as number one qualifier, we haven't seen him until this championship match. But uh, he has been excellent today. Took over the first place uh, spot in the 16, uh, among the last 16 bowlers coming into this TV stepladder and uh, has been red hot. That's for sure. And, uh, you know, he, he just, like you say, he came on very strong. 
and uh, his last few games he just warped the field. Uh, he, qualif he qualified uh, eighth in the uh, match play, uh, in the qualifying. Ooh, he hugged oh. the lane there very, very close <laughs> to finding the gutter on that one and still hung on. What I mean by that, uh, uh, Rich, is uh, we had 72 bowlers uh, here, and they, everybody bowled 18 games. Ooh. And uh, <laughs> My, he was flirting with disaster on that one, Dick. And then we cut to the top 16 after the uh, ma uh, qualifying of 18 games, and the boys bowled uh, uh, 16 more match play games, and then he uh, came from uh, from eighth to uh, first place. And did it late in the qualifying today, just kind of steadily made his way up and bowled some very good average 229 in the tournament coming into this game. He's from Tacoma, Washington, only 23 years old, been a PBA member for four years, and Dick, he's one of the young guns that you've been talking about this week, the up-and-comers in this game that we've got to keep an eye on. Yeah, he's going to the national tour this 1994 season, so uh, the boys got a rude awakening. We to wait for him. And you know, there's uh, Jeff Rickles getting his, his third strike and roll for the turkey, and he's averaged 246 for his uh, three, three match play games on this particular pair as we watch him bowl for his third, third strike. And he's done it doing just this. That's burying the ball in the pocket <laughs> and not leaving anything to chance. And uh, he is bowling very pure right now. It seems like everything he's throwing, it's like he's found a groove, and that ball is just sticking right in it all the way down, his own personal groove on these lanes. And he's got the key laid down, too. Right there. The key lane here is... Uh, Lane 29, the left lane, and uh, he's got it down where the other bowlers are having a little bit of trouble with it. We'll be back with Lenny Blakey's uh, rebuttal to Rick Rickles when we get back. This is Lenny Blakey, and ooh, we come back uh, here at the National Resident Pro Championship to some bad news for Lenny Blakey. He's bowling against Jeff Rickles, who is uh, riding four consecutive strikes to start this championship match at the Resident Pro Championship. And Lenny Blakey, who had marked in his first three frames, comes up with this awkward split in this one, Dick. The big five. Oh, and that's the only way you can make it, and he just about made it. Uh, hoping the pin would come back up the, on the lane to uh, get the four pin out. A nice shot, but it still is an open frame, and that's bad news, and any bowler that's been bowling against uh, Jeff Rickles today could tell Lenny Blakey that now he has his work cut out in, uh, for him because uh, Rickles is about as hot as they come right now. And uh, that's a disastrous split for uh, Blakey, so he's down uh, 50, uh, 59 pins right now. And there he goes. He responds in good fashion, and so now it's up uh, with, with Rickles with the commanding lead that he has. Now, of course, the burden is on him. All he's got to do is keep on keeping on and uh, take care of his business, and this uh, championship here at the National Resident Pro Championship at AMF Island Bowl will be his. That is what you call keeping on, keeping on. That's his perfection. You know, he's timed well. He's, he's uh, getting the ball rolling well. 
And we need to point out, uh, Dick, that uh, as we pointed out earlier, as we see the replay of what a pure shot this is, that Rickles was one loss to Sam Zurich away from not making this uh, TV stepladder, the final five. He defeated Sam Zurich, and he was in the five. He has now defeated Jim Polis. He defeated Jim, or I'm sorry, Joe Viscomi and uh, Dennis Horan. And now here he is in his 39th game of this tournament against Lenny Blakey. And that's how you get into the 39th game of the tournament. Five consecutive strikes to begin this championship match. You know, he's got the six bagger here. Uh, as, as we see the six strike coming up, uh, this, the six pin, this knocking the 10 pin out, which so is so good. And uh, remember, $1,000 for the hey, Do you want to you put that pressure on him already, <laughs> do you? Then we better go down there and whisper that to him. He's halfway through. Oh, my. That's two consecutive splits. And it was interesting watching the, uh, the reaction of Jeff Rickles there as Lenny Blakey rolls a very familiar split. And, Dick, in your career, in your long and storied career, how do you pick up this split? Uh, actually, Rick, you just go for the two and hope the pin bounces out and get the uh, one pin bounces out and get the other two. But uh, uh, Lenny bowled so well, you know, and, uh, and, and he knows he had to get going fast because he knew Rickles was uh, bowling well, averaging 246 for the three games that he's already bowled. So uh, it puts a little pressure on him. And he's a young man, 23 years of age, and gets uh, pressed a little bit. Uh, do you think experience plays into it at this point? Uh, under the TV lights, perhaps, uh, returns here with a strike. Uh, how does that play into a match like this? Well, I, I think it uh, plays into the match uh, pr pretty much because Rick Rickles is one of the veterans that's uh, been around uh, quite a bit. He does a little bit, uh, bit of TV work in, uh, in Milwaukee for bowling and uh, of course, being a police reporter, what else do you expect, right? He is a reporter, so of course, I, uh, as the sports editor of the newspaper here at Corpus <laughs> Christi, I have a special spot in my heart for him, but he is the police repeat, police beat reporter, I should say, for the Capital Times in Madison, Wisconsin. He's used to being under the, uh, under the spotlight, of course. Oh, well, there goes the $1,000. See, you jinxed him there, Dick. Uh, a little bit. <laughs> you bring up the thousand dollars and there it went. Yeah, uh, and he knew it was there. Oh, but the, you know he he took a re rack before uh, he he bowled that uh, frame, mm -hmm. and uh, that was the first re rack of the uh, of the uh, tournament uh, in the TV finals here. You know it's interesting though. Even uh, even now as he picks up this mark, uh, he's bowling with such confidence. You could see him. He steps up there. He doesn't take his time. I mean, this is a guy who's walking up there and rolling the ball. He knows exactly what he wants to do when he gets that green ball in his hand, and uh, and he does it right away. It's like this. Show me a lane I can't hit. That's right. <laughs> and it's got to be a good feeling, Dick. Of course, you've experienced that feeling before, where everything you seem to do is the right thing. And I certainly seem like Jeff Rickles is in that uh, that zone. <laughs> That's for sure, and he just he just wants to keep clean, uh, keep his spares coming because uh, he'll have uh, Lenny uh, uh, beat out because Lenny can get a uh, a nice 217 if he goes all the way out from the eighth, ninth, and tenth frame. But uh, mm -hmm. you know, as you said a while ago, when you're zoned in, everything goes for you. It's How just, unusual it is is this, uh, Dick? Uh, you've you've certainly seen these regionals before. Jeff Rickles, the number five qualifier. It's unusual, isn't it, to see somebody come uh, all the way from number five to a championship? Well, it happened. It happens. It has happened before, but uh, it's uh, it's unusual because we have some uh, such good talent on the on this telecast, and uh, just it, things just going good for uh, Jeff Rickles. That's all. Now Blakey has had uh, opens in two of his last three frames, sandwiches uh, sandwiched some strikes around those opens. He's got to hope for a miracle at this point, and certainly he's got to take care of his. Interests. You know, it's funny. He he picked that uh, picked that lane to finish on, Rich, uh, on lane uh, 30, the right lane, because he was afraid of lane 29. But as I see, uh, he struck uh, uh, three times on lane 29 and just uh, missed once. So uh, lane 30 has been his uh, downfall. He picks up the spare and and looking at Jeff Rickles, uh, he's alternating between uh, trying to to. Uh, to fight off a smile and burying his face in his towel. He doesn't know whether to be happy or to be nervous uh, heading down the stretch here because he knows that all he needs to do is take care of his job here down the stretch. And this National Resident Pro Championship and the $6,000 paycheck is his. Yeah. 
Lenny doesn't have anything to be ashamed of. He bowled so well to get where he was. So, mm -hmm. uh, And we're going to see this young man again. Uh, he, As you said, he is one of the red-hot bowlers, 23 years old. He's got a lot of time ahead of him to show us what he's made of. This Mike made a, uh, Mike a little mention here again, uh, uh, Rich. We got Tony Lanning from Louis, Louisville, uh, Texas, who made uh, 11th place in the finals. Uh, Alex Rios from San Antonio, and Robert Tedesco from Schenectady, New York. John Gilligan from Centralia, Washington. Brian Tice from Green Bay, Wisconsin, and Jeff Kwiatkowski uh, from Maumee, Ohio. And there, Rickles uh, leaves the 10 pin again. Something he hasn't seen a whole lot of today. And he's got to be close to closing this one out. I uh, I would think if he picks this one up, he's going to be in very comfortable shape, Dick. He's just an automatic winner right now, whether he, he makes it or not, uh, Rich. He's just uh, got things in hand, and uh, he's not going to miss it, that's for sure. Okay, so think. we'll say there, well, let's just go ahead and <laughs> jump out on the uh, political bandwagon here, and let's call him the winner here. No electoral, electoral college needed on this one. He is the champion of this, uh, of this event. Jeff Rickles comes from the number five qualification spot to win the championship, beating Lenny Blakey here. And what now? What now for Jeff Rickles, Dick? Where does he go from here? Well, he'll stay fine-tuned because he'll make some of the national tour, but he'll make some of our regional program, too. But he'll fine-tune himself for the Tournament of Champions that comes up in uh, April uh, in Akron, Ohio. So he'll, uh, he'll stay sharp. Jeff's one of those individuals that uh, keeps up on his bowling and practice, and uh, he changes the bowling balls and everything like that. So. All right, so $6,000 for this championship, and again, the General Tire Tournament of Champions, which is uh, next April? Next April in, in Akron, Akron, Ohio. Right. And that's certainly a berth that uh, if he goes like this <laughs> in that tournament, uh, he may be a name that we'll be seeing again down the stretch. You know, his low game uh, today is uh, 227 when he bowled, uh, bowled against uh, Jim Polis. And uh, there's a happy Jeff, uh, Jeff Rickles. And uh, the next game he bowled a uh, 247 against uh, Joe Viscomi. And then uh, 265 against Dennis Oran. And now a 257 against Lenny Blakey. A 257, Jeff Rickles is our champion here of the PBA National Resident Pro Championship. And Lenny Blakey will get to close out his game and won't take much time doing it because he knows it's a <laughs> foregone conclusion. And, and I tell you what, Dick, it's, it's almost been a foregone conclusion as you watch Jeff Rickles and, and now he manhandled Jim Polis and Joe Viscomi and Dennis Horan. You said this is a red-hot bowler. It sure is because he just, he just threw fear into him when he hit the left lane, like lane 29, and everybody else was uh, struggling with it. So uh, uh, when you do that, uh, you're going to be pretty much assured of a win. Is it tough? Uh, the, the, the negative part, I would guess, of being the number one qualifier is the waiting game and being maybe a little bit colder than the number five qualifier or, or number four or three who's gotten to bowl a game heading into the TV match with the lights and everything else. Does that play into it, Dick, as oh. far as sitting around a little bit longer than the rest of them? I think so, Rich, because you're waiting in the wings and then you see a guy averaging 246 for three games. You've got to have a little fear in yourself in, in, the, in the individual that you're bowling. So... Uh, you want to get out there and get that fast start, which Lenny did. He started off with two strikes, but then all of a sudden, uh, the lights went out on him. Well, as Lenny Blakey finishes up his game, we'll remind you, Jeff Rickles with his third PBA regional title of 1993. That's his 11th of his career. Blakey finishes out with a 185. Rickles with a 257. And our champion, Jeff Rickles of Madison, Wisconsin, a newspaper reporter, now a regional bowling champion. We'll be right back to meet Jeff Rickles and to uh, hand out the winner's check when we come back. Just one more strike for a 300 game. For the inside track on your favorite bowlers, become part of the PBA Fan Club. All fan club members receive the PBA Media Guide and show programs along with your official membership card. Also, for a limited time only, this Millionaire's Club poster is included. So don't wait, call it today. Call 1-800-299-4PBA for your membership in the PBA Fan Club. Where once there was one ninja, now there are three. The original ninja, the first AMF ball to harness the power and hope of reactive thing cover stock. 
the smooth, arcing Ninja Master, a masterful balance of power and control. And the Ninja Fury, unrestrained in its extraordinary hook and incredible power. The new Ninja Fighting Force from AMF. The power to improve your individual style. back with the champion of this year's PBA National Resident Pro Champion, Jeff Rickles, average 249 to win this championship. Yeah, thanks, Rich. I just want to say thanks to the people at AMF, Steve Mackey and Tony Schrantz and his wonderful staff and all you lovely people from Corpus Christi. I hope I make it back next year. Yeah. And we'll be back next year. Thank you for joining us today for the PBA Resident National Pro Championship. Ladies and gentlemen, we proudly present this afternoon's finalists for the IOF Foresters Bowling for Miracles Open. Pete Weber is the fifth seed. He's the PBA's career earnings leader and triple crown winner. Kelly Kaufman of Topeka, Kansas is his opponent. He's seeking his first PBA title. Atleto Monticelli is third seeded. This two-time PBA Player of the Year is also a 14-time champion. Next up, Marshall Holman, PBA Hall of Famer and the PBA second leading money winner. Mike Edwards is the top seed. He is the PBA's most prodigious money winner without benefit of a title. Just one game away from his first championship. And that's our outstanding field of five for the IOF Foresters Bowling for Miracles Open Finals. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, a capacity crowd here in Markham, Ontario. We are happy to be back in Canada, in the Toronto area. It's so beautiful here, and the people are wonderful. In our field, there are 56 titles represented. Nelson Burton Jr. is this with one man who has 21 of those, a PBA Hall of Famer. So we go to Marshall Holman and Bo right now. 
Thank you, Chris. If it's comebacks you're looking for, this man fits the bill. Marshall Holman, Bowling's all-time leading money winner coming into 1994, now number two. The last two years have been miserable, and many critics have said Marshall Holman is over the hill. What do you think? Well, Bo, I think I started that rumor, uh, but uh, it's nice to be back. I feel really good, you know, with with uh, Petragli making the telecast and you making the telecast, hey, there is room for people close to 40 and over. <laughs> Thank you, partner. You're a great bowler and good luck today. And if you like power, power is where it's at today. Today's quintet features the most powerful bowler in professional bowling. He'll be in the opening match, Kelly Kaufman. And for great players, three of the greatest that ever graced this game are in the field today, Chris. All right, and there's a lot of money at stake. Out of that $210,000, the winner today will receive $43,000, second $22,500, third $13,000, fourth place $10,000, and fifth $8,000. And we're ready for the handshake and the very first head-to-head -head match. And we're at Club 300 Bowl. And Pete Weber shook the hand of huge Kelly Kaufman. And Pete will shoot first. from Topeka, Kansas, 6'2", 240, 28-year-older, and he's looking for that first title. Another 10. Wow, surprisingly, both players starting with a solid 10. Here's the man with the boss ball, the best ball on the tour. He's not only big and strong, but watch the wrist action, the cock, and straight on through the target. Look at that big snap. Father Virgil was an excellent bowler. And here's a man that uh, toured the, the state of Kansas for a long time with a very successful softball team. And he still does it when he has the opportunity. One guy to watch. He can flat make it happen. And wastes very little time once he gets set. And neither does Pete Weber who's cleaning off the orange bowling ball. And he's on the right lane now, spare up shooting in the second frame. Now the game has begun, really. The familiar profile of Pete Weber, five steps, high backswing. He also cocks his wrist in this position, goes straight to the target, right around the second arrow. Ball sets up, and both players have bold, identical first and second frames. Looking at the defending champion of the IOF Foresters Open. Double for Pete, and the long look. Pete likes the ball, keeps it very light, just saws the rack. Tough shot for Kelly Coffin, who stuck at the line, it appears. Going high. Let's see the pin action. This is very interesting pin action. How can a player hit the head pin just get five pins? With that sharp breaking hook, there's no deflection. He cuts right through the 3, 4, 6, 7, 10. So it's an open frame for strong man Kelly Kaufman. Sometimes he pays the price for using so much power. Well, the upside is uh, I throw a lot of strikes and uh, I tend to throw a lot of high games, you know, 250s, 260s. And the downside is when I do get into trouble, I can throw a lot of splits and wind up shooting a lot of 150s and 160s. So it kind of balances out. Um, but today I feel like the 260s are in my future. All right, and he came back with a powerful strike in the fourth frame, trailing by 24. We're in Markham, Ontario, located just north of Toronto, which has a skyline of the past, and then, as you will see, the skyline of the present.
Fabergé. Men are back. First impressions are happening all the time. So don't let flakes be the first thing people see. Head and shoulders helps prevent flakes. Doesn't just rinse them away. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. Okay, two scoops of raisins make Kellogg's Raisin Bran taste so good, people forget it's good for you. What do you think? It's delicious. And? It, uh, tastes good. That's the same reason. He stole my answer. And it's not an answer. I, I agree with them. It tastes great. Okay, okay, okay. You got the first part right. Kellogg's Raisin Bran tastes good, but... Good for us! <laughs> there are two reasons to eat Kellogg's Raisin Bran. The taste. And? We're in Markham, Ontario, a suburb of uh, vast and cosmopolitan Toronto, Championship City. Here is a many-time champion. In fact, 21 is 15 years in the PBA. 31-year-old Pete Weber. Increasing his lead now to 34 pins with that three-bagger here in the very first game going against Kelly Kaufman. Pete Weber has this technical explanation for his lack of consistency in 94. Well, this year the, the lanes have been a little wet dry and I really haven't figured out how to play them. The wet is extremely wet, the dry is dry, and when I find out how to do it, I'll be back. And Chris, what he means by wet dry is very basically oil is not dispersed equally across the lane gutter to gutter, so there's a drier area to the right. His ball has been very sensitive to the dry area and to the oil. See, either skidding too much or hooking too much. And he has to make an adjustment to be consistent. So far in this match, he's been excellent through five frames. Yet this year, he has been a uh, top seed twice. The showboat and AC Delco have finished twice, or second, both times. Good comeback by Kelly Kaufman, doubling here, keeping that lead within range at 23 pins. You cannot have a big enough lead against Kelly. He just can strike from anywhere. He takes hardly any time. He knows what he wants to do. He has a great arm swing, powerful fella, and he knows that anything on the right side is fair game for that boss ball. Almost gets the reverse blowing two pin as he hits the light. The head pin goes to the sideboard, scatters out the two, five, and eight. And the eight pin does not quite till over. The strike there, and he would have reduced Weber's lead down to just 13. Now it'll be 24. Molly Kaufman in his eighth television appearance as a pro. On the other hand, his opponent, Pete Weber, is in his 68th television appearance. Both these fellas are going to be around for a long time. They're right in the prime of their bowling years. How could it miss the nine? Solid nine. Excellent shot by Pete Weber. Apparently a good hit. The ball does not respect these three pounds, six ounce pins, reactive resin ball, synthetic lane surface, no contest. Nine count. Almost fell over the line. He's in a good mood today, Nelson. Uh, that's good to see. I, I really agree, Chris. Uh, I think Pete's worst enemy has been himself and his temperament over the years. I think he's mellowed a lot this year, and, and he's on his way to being as great as he can be. And that woman has helped quite a bit, Kim Weber. We'll credit her with a lot. Peter now with a 23-pin lead, seventh frame. Again, the scout didn't do its work, though. Well, he's keeping it in play, Chris. The, the downfall of Pete Weber has been in the last two matches. You see his ball hitting light, head pin going to the left sideboard, kicking out of that left channel, and misses a 10 pin. His downfall has been a bad frame in the last two matches. So, so far, he's been in excellent shape. Just a few miles south of Club 300 Ball in nearby Toronto, visitors can find the Hockey Hall of Fame, which opened on this site, the former bank building location, nine months ago. Magnificent ceiling of the trophy room. All 
Hall houses the Stanley Cup and other NHL awards can be found along with inductee plaques. When kids come first, everyone wins. Hi, this is Marie Osmond for the IOF Foresters Bowling for Miracles Bowlathon. Hospitalized kids in your community need your help, and you can do it while having fun and earning prizes, including a trip to join me at Disneyland for the Children's Miracle Network Telethon. The event is sponsored by the Independent Order of Foresters, a not-for-profit fraternal organization with more than one million members. Since 1874, whether it be tornado, flood, or personal tragedy, the IOF Foresters help members in times of need. IOF Foresters also support community projects that help families, such as effective parenting, free fingerprinting for children, and the Children's Miracle Network. You're invited to be a part of the IOF Foresters Bowling for Miracles. Come bowl with us. For more details, call today. Remember, a call starts you on your way to having fun while supporting your local children's hospital through the Children's Miracle Network. Undefeated Kennedy McKinney captured his world title with a stunning come-from-behind knockout. Now the championship rematch on ABC's Wide World of Sports, next. At Club 300 Bowl in Markham, Ontario, Canada, IOF Foresters Bowling for Miracles Open. Kelly Kaufman is bowling Pete Weber in the first game, trailing by 22. Foundation for an attack. And here is the 1993 Player of the Year, the great Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Thanks, Chris. I'm here with my old doubles partner, Amleta Monicelli. Amleta, you were Player of the Year in 89 and 90. Last year was kind of eh for you, but uh, I know you've been bowling really well the last few weeks. How do you think it's going to go out there? Well, as long as I make good shots and keep my patience and work hard, I'm going to do well. Well, that looks uh, pretty strong out there, and looks like he's got some good competition. What a doubles play. And Leto and Walter Ray. And Kelly Kaufman now tightening the screws. He has just doubled. Uh, Weber's lead is down to 12 feet. Has a spare up shooting on the right lane in the eighth frame. High risk, high reward players. Almost everyone in the field today, power players. Weber slides by the head pin, leaving the 2 8 double wood spare. And this spare has given players trouble all week long. If you start at it, it hooks by it. If you hang it out, it can hang. Look out, Peter. Good shot. All right, tonight on ABC, our friend Dorothy Hamill and the stars of the Ice Capades retell the classic story of Cinderella Frozen in Time, followed by. Secrets Revealed, hosted by William Devane and the Kamish, all coming up tonight on ABC. As we go to the ninth frame, both players have a potential 235 game. Two frames left. The winner of this game will meet Amleta Monicelli. And Marshall Holman. Here's where Kelly Kaufman has to improve his game in championship round play. He has a chance to put the peat on Weber, but he must throw strikes. Use that big weapon, throw the strike ball. He trusted it, but it went way too wide. That ball was perceivably four or five boards right. Look at this replay. Lays the ball down inside the third arrow, and he was going out to about the fourth board. That time he went out to about the second board, too wide. Luckily avoids the 210 split. Oh, Nelson, trust is a must. <laughs> or your game can be a bust. However, Chelsea Kaufman, Kelly's wife, uh, didn't particularly like that shot in the ninth frame, but it's not over for Kelly yet. With two strikes here in the tenth frame, to finish with a 2-14 game and make Weber throw at least a spare strike in the tenth for victory. Still a lot of room left. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Splitting through. Goodness. Okay. Kelly has one outside chance of winning this game. He has to make this, but he needs to get the ball over here in the 3-6 zone and drive the three pin over in the 4-7 zone. It's a must shot in the 10th frame for any chance. Oh, bad break. Bad break for Chelsea and Kelly Kaufman as Pete Weber is 
That's a 188 for Kelly Kaufman. Pete needs just a few pins to lock up the match. And that is enough. That's the victory. It's going to be Pete Weber and Amleto Monicelli in match number two. Pete, best he can finish is 215. Kelly Kaufman in the in the barn at 188. And uh, looks like his daughter dressed him today, or he needs a haircut, that's for sure. All right. Pete Weber may be looking forward to the final match against Mike Edwards. Full count for Pete with the ponytail Pete. Let's call him Petey when he got a, has a ponytail like that. But he's bowled well the first game, 215 with a strike. Two fifteen one eighty eight. as this ABC Sports presentation of the Professional Bowlers Tour will continue after these messages and a word from our ABC station. America's greatest horse race, the Kentucky Derby, May 7th on ABC. My uh, truck has uh, 99,000 miles on it, and it's like, a, it's like a brand new engine. America is talking about split fire. I feel like I have a new engine. No hesitation. You get your passing gear, you're gone. Right now. Split Fire won a United States patent. It doesn't look like any other spark plug. It doesn't work like any other spark plug. I love them. I have them on my motorcycle, my boat, and my car. I love them. Love them. Split Fire. At $5.99, America knows it only costs more till you use it. I can say I'm saving at least 3 to $4 a week. Probably getting, um, I would say, about 20 miles more. Uh, per tank pool, and that's a lot for me. They'll pay for themselves basically in the first six months you own them. Split fire. It only costs more till you use it. Here's another split fire breakthrough. Twin core wire sets with a dual firing path to every plug. More power and more mileage for your money back. Saturday, Dorothy Hamill is Cinderella. America's original sweetheart brings this beloved fairy tale to the ice capades. Lloyd Bridges tells the enchanted story, and Dorothy Hamill stars as Cinderella, Frozen in Time, Saturday. There's always something happening. It's happening now at Middleton Ford. The happening is a new badge of the bone. Middleton Ford Ranger, starting as low as $143 per month. That's right, just $143 per month. Take a test drive and receive a badge of the bone hat. Hurry, supplies are limited. Now Oatmeal Crisp with apples has 25% more apples than before. How does that hit you, Mr. Newton? Uh-oh. Look for specially marked boxes. They've just added 25% more almonds to Oatmeal Crisp with almonds. 25%. How nuts is that? Look for specially marked boxes. Watch the pick three drawing tonight at 623, right here on Channel 27. The Pro Bowlers Tour, brought to you by Split Fire, the patented performance spark plug. It only costs more until you use it. Calcium rich Tums. Tums helps wipe out heartburn and gives you calcium. And Thompson's Water Seal Waterproofer, the brand of trust for all your waterproofing needs. Our first game has ended, and as you see, Pete Weber defeated Kelly Kaufman 215 to 188, each professional with five strikes. Now it'll be Weber against Monticelli. And next week is our 14th and final stop on our winter tour of telecasts, and it'll be the General Tire Tournament of Champions, Bo, and Tremendous field, more than 52. Actually, 53 players this year. Chris, uh, Dave Davis invoked his uh, right as a former champion to enter the tournament. So let's look at some of the players that are there. And obviously, some very, very tough players, all name marquee players. $65,000 for first prize next week. And Jess Staybrook is on the bubble. In other words, if uh, Mike Edwards should win, he's the tournament leader, then Stayrook would be out of that field and Edwards in. But if is a big two-letter word, isn't it? 
Here we go now into the second game. Pete Weber going against Amleto Monicelli of Barakisimato, Venezuela. Well, advantage Pete Weber. Pete just needs a little confidence in the championship round after two disastrous tournaments, uh, one in Las Vegas and one at the Quaker State. And he's off and rolling. Monicelli, I believe, is the toughest player among this field of five when he gets lined up. He can hold the pair, as we call it, for longer than any of these players. So let's see how he gets going in the early three frames. Oh, what a kiss. A little backdoor action there. Woo. Woo. The classic style of Monicelli, that stutter, five and a half step delivery, the high back swing, very similar to Weber's, except he opens his hand, then drives it straight through this target area, much like Mark Roth did years ago, except Monicelli has more of what we call a modern release where the ball rolls out, the two tripped out to four, and he's off to a great start. Sleeper eight from the left lane and let him on the From the low angle, you see a shot we've seen a number of times today. The ball just barely sliding by the head pin, leaving the two eight. Third time we've seen that today. And the championship pair setting them up. Basically, the left hand lane 11 hangs a little bit more than the right hand lane. And with synthetic lanes, the ball reacts a little bit more to the oil and a little bit more of the dry. Sets up that type of shot. Nicely done, and let him on the 32-year-old. Player of the year, back-to-back, -back 89 and 90. Pete Weber just playing an ideal shot. He's playing where he slides about in this area. He's going right about between the second and third arrows, driving it right into this zone. Now, you can see on the, the right-hand lane, he'll be more around the second arrow on the tighter lane. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Weber now with that double. Takes a 10-pin lead here in the second match. If you just joined us, he won the first game against Kelly Kaufman, 215 to 188. Now we saw Weber just inside the third arrow on the right-hand lane. Now as he comes up on the left-hand lane, he has a slight edge in the match. He's relaxed from a match win over Kelly Kaufman. Plus, he's made the adjustment on this lane. He'll either go with a little less speed, a little bit more turn, and a little more angle outside. Tomorrow here on ABC, the pursuit of hockey's ultimate goal begins. That's right, the Stanley Cup playoffs get underway with live regional coverage beginning at 1 Eastern, 12 noon Central and Pacific. Then, IndyCar's best take to the streets of Southern California for the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. All tomorrow right here on ABC Sports. And we are in Canada. <laughs> Amleto with a big step over in the second to last step. Watch this. Here it is. The perfect. He steps too far to the left, gets the ball inside of his target, stays in that higher oil concentration in the center of the lane, and slides by the head pin. The two pin seems like the pin of choice when you miss, and they're missing mostly to the right today. Monicelli, he's playing an angle pretty deep on the right-hand lane, right around the third arrow. On the left-hand lane, I believe he's going to try to make a move a little bit more between the second and third arrows or reduce his speed. That's either one will work on the synthetic lane. So let's see what happens. He needs to hit this lane to get back in contention. All right. This is our second game, the IOF Foresters. You know, while visiting Toronto's Hockey Hall of Fame, a familiar personality called Wayne Gretzky's 50th goal. Vegas Live, no pass Coliseum in Edmonton. Barber's got it. Barber clears the park. Mark to Anderson. He sends it to Gretzky. Gretzky, he's going to the center ice. It's an empty netter. He scores! 
30, 50 goals in 39 games for the great one. Awesome, baby. It's beautiful. The place is going crazy. Oh. Here's the choice. Thompson's now or rebuild later. Thompson's now or repair later. Thompson's now or replace later. Over time, water invisibly weakens unprotected surfaces. Suddenly, you've got damage. Used regularly, Thompson's Water Seal Waterproofer helps stop costly damage. Keep up your protection. Maintain your investment with Thompson's now. Also protect with Thompson's stain, the only stain with Thompson's Water Seal Waterproofer. She loved the chili. It didn't love her. He loved the fries. They didn't love him. She loved the meatloaf. Don't love the Tums. Tums has calcium. Yes, Tums has calcium. Original Rolates has calcium and magnesium. These have aluminum and magnesium. Tums helps knock out heartburn and gives you calcium. Something my body needs anyway. I love that. Calcium rich Tums. Bowling's big wheels roll into Akron for their sport's most coveted crowd. It's the General Charter Tournament of Champions next Saturday on the season finale of ABC's Pro Bowlers Tour. We look forward to the General Tire Tournament of Champions one week from today right here on ABC Live. George Branham, the defending champion. So far here in game two, Pete Weber perfect through three leads and Leto Monticelli by 21. Wellesley, Ontario made 218 ringers out of a possible 236. Walter A. Williams, Jr. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. With me is Marshall. Marshall, you've been a uh, hell of a bowler all these years, and uh, now you're getting ready to go out there and make a TV appearance. Uh, how's it going to go? Well, I'm feeling very confident, Walter. You know, it's been a long time, and uh, it was such a thrill to make the top five. Uh, I feel real loose. I watched you last night. You look like the old Marshall. He's going to be tough. Thanks. Two and three of the many reasons that I'm proud to be a part of uh, this series, Bo. Wonderful people. And wonderful talents. Oh. Pete Weber off to a great start. Has put the squeeze on two-time bowler of the year. And Leto Monticelli, Monticelli trailing by 41. Mandatory. He throws some strikes. Fifth frame. That's a double and very important for Amleta Monticelli, whose wife, Teresa, and sister, Angela, are building a home for Teresa and Amleto. Teresa, the architect, and Angela, the engineer. Be done in about a month. It's supposed to be beautiful. Now two great bowlers, great abilities, have studied the game, armed with great equipment at the zenith of their careers. Neither one of these men will falter. Right now, Monticelli needs a strike to cut Weber's lead to 21. Seriously sensitive to the dry. That's the way the players will call it. You see the shot of Amleto Monticelli. He's moved farther out here on the left-hand lane. You see him crossing closer to the second arrow. Gets it out to the dry part of the lane, which is approximately 41 feet down the surface from the foul line. It takes that big break. He's lucky to get away from the split. Has the 3 6 spare. Great form. Fine follow through. But I'm letting Monicelli here in the second game is going against Pete Weber, who has five in a row. Frame number six. Well, I'm really miffed at that shot by Weber as he goes high and leaves the 3, 9, 10. Needs to get the ball over here between the 3 and 10 and hopefully take out the 9. He'll probably go down the right-hand side of the lane surface to get enough angle on the 3 pin. Well, let's see what happens now, Chris. Mm -hmm. uh, Weber is finally throwing a ball that is 
out of character, and that's been his kind of his um, pro forma this year. He's had the games where he had him well in hand, as he had Monticelli on the ropes, and now he's let him off the ropes. A lead that could have been up to 50 pins has now been squandered down to just 18. Second game beyond the halfway point. And more in a little while. But let's go back to that uh, Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto. And it's the tryout of Randy Peterson. ABC, of course, doing the Stanley Cup playoffs. But here is first the slap shot by Randy Peterson. Now watch, he tries to stop a few pucks. ABC's NHL playoff coverage tomorrow, 1 Eastern, noon and four at Central and Pacific. It's time to catch spring fever at Napa, the place more people rely on to keep their vehicles running and to help them save. Get easy-to-use no-touch tire care. Buy one for $2.99 and get the second one free. Valvoline oil is just 94 cents a quart. Spring is the perfect time for this handy eight-piece cooler combo, just $18.99. So spring into your nearest Napa Auto Parts store today and catch the fever. I can't go out there. The public will be worse. I gotta need this job. My eyes are itchy. I'm stuffed up. I'm desperate. It's... With a leading allergy brand, you'll still be stuffed up. But with new DayQuil, you won't. New Vicks DayQuil Allergy. More medicines for more complete relief than the leading brand. What a day. New DayQuil Allergy. The anytime stuffy nose, sneezing, runny nose, itchy, watery eyes so you can face the allergy season medicine. And new Children's DayQuil Allergy. It's crunch time in the NHL. The playoff party begins as the league's top teams meet in live regional action Sunday here on ABC. This is our tournament leader, Mike Edwards. <laughs> Laughing, slipping at the line, but it's a practice shot. Winner of the game you're watching now, Monicelli and Weber will face Marshall Holman next. High hit and trouble. Leaving the 6, 7, 10. Amleto Monticelli, just not enough ball speed to hold the line today on this sharp breaking back end. What he needs to do is get the ball over in the 6 7 zone. The ball will take out the 10. The 6 must be slid across the lane into the 7. All out effort. We expect nothing less from this Venezuelan who has a total of 14 titles, player of the year in both 1989 and 90. Here's the man that won titles in 10 consecutive years, going back to 1984, Pete Weber. Monticelli, for any chance to win the game, must throw some strikes. He has to pick up the ball speed or loft the ball a little bit farther out over the line. And laid it down just beyond the line, Bo. You're right, Chris, and it, it's, the ball will not take the proper break. It, once it gets to the break point, it makes a transition much too quickly. Instead of uh, curving to the pocket, it snaps to the pocket, and that's always an erratic type of roll. All right, now it's Pete Weber again leading by Good size margin of 33 pins, and he has a strike up. Can increase it to 43. Eighth frame. Pete keeping that ball all in the center of the lane. In the heavier oil concentration lane, he has a much better control than his two opponents so far. He breaks up the 7-10, but it was a good shot. Coming up next on ABC's Wide World of Sports, Bex Professional Boxing presents undefeated Kennedy McKinney defending his crown in a rematch for the IBF World Junior Featherweight Championship Live, plus the Wood Memorial Invitational, all next here on ABC. In the ninth, 
first strike. Here's the reaction. Pete's best shot of the day. Keeps that arm close to his body, rolls the wrist, just nails it. Right now, Pete, even if he got a nine account out in the 10th frame, would finish with a 2-13 game. So Monicelli, would, to have any chance, would have to strike out ninth frame. And Leto won in Sayville. And he was third at the Johnny Petragli Open in North Brunswick, New Jersey. Amleto, the third ranked bowler on the PBA Tour, IBM computer ranks. Outstanding, excellent player going against bowling's leading money winner, Pete Weber. Right now, 10th frame, Monticelli must strike for any chance. That's an oh no. Well, Monticelli's going to have to settle for something in the 180s. Pete Weber is going to meet Marshall Holman, the one, two bowlers, all-time money winners in bowling history in the semifinal match. trying to see really how much hold area I believe he has on that particular shot. You want to see when you can't swing it and trust it, all his opponents have tried that. He's trying to let the ball fall back in the pocket. Not a bad test shot. The game has already been secured. All right, it's a 209 for Pete Weber to 180 and Leto Monicelli. This week, Choice Hotel's Tip of the Week features bowling mentor Don Johnson. ABC Sports presents a winning never gets old bowling tip brought to you by Quality Comfort Clarion and Sleep Hotels. With me today is 26 time PBA champion, Hall of Famer, and one of the great instructors of our sport today, Don Johnson. Don, what do you have for us? Well, Bo, what we want to work on today is, is try to get the ball closer to our ankle. Again, when we get older, we can't rely on as much power as we did when we were younger. So we're going to work on accuracy today. And I want to show you a little tip that we can do with our feet that will really help us get the ball closer to your ankle. Now, here you go see my approach. Now, watch the next to last step coming up. Now, watch how it comes in front of my third step. This is called the tightrope step. Now, as the ball starts down, watch the right knee clear out of the way so this ball could be right next to your ankle. If we get this ball closer to our ankle, our scores have to go up. And again, I think this is really going to help some of the seniors out there today. Terrific tip from Don Johnson. Work on the pivot step. Keep that arm close to your body. You'll improve your accuracy and your power. And remember, winning never gets old. Look for future ABC Sports winning never gets old bowling tips brought to you by Quality, Comfort, Clarion, and Sleep Hotels. There are gut balls and gutter balls, and sometimes the trophy falls. But no matter what, you'll love the bowlers who have it all on ABC Sports Home Video, Bowling the Perfect Game. Call 1-800-4-ABC-VCR to order bowling's colorful history. Narrated by Chris Schenkel and Nelson Burton Jr. Charge it on your Visa card for only $14.98 plus $3.95 shipping. That's 1-800-4-ABC-VCR. You know, winning never gets old. And neither does saving money. If you're 50 or over, just call 1-800-4-CHOICE to reserve a room in any quality, comfort, clarion, or sleep hotel. And you can save 30% off the price of your room. That number again, 1-800-4-CHOICE. Perfect. Travelers 50 and over save 30% at quality, comfort, clarion, and sleep hotels.
Betty Crocker four-piece steak knife set with bonus recipe book just $3.99 while supplies last at true value. Some plastic can actually improve the look of your lawn. Hefty handle sack trash bags just $3.99 a box while supplies last at true value. True value. Help is just around the corner. Hurry, girls, before Daddy gets up. Ooh, pretty. Hmm. Now, no more. These are Daddy's corn pops. Oh, look. Daddy's bowl is too full. The problem with a cereal that tastes like popcorn, only sweeter, mm. is that it disappears mm. like popcorn, mm. only faster. Mommy, that's Daddy's. We share. Hi, hey, girls. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Thanks, guys. Now, let's all go make him breakfast. Kellogg's Corn Pops. It's hard to stop when it's Pops. A very expensive maker of lawn tractors likes to say, nothing runs like them. The makers of Yardman tractors take exception to that. The Yardman lawn tractor uses a powerful engine to mulch, bag, and side discharge. And it has a hydrostatic transmission. So it runs like a you-know-what. Only it doesn't cost nearly as much money. Yardman. American-made, American-owned. Two games completed and the Foresters open. Weber winning his second, 209 to Monticelli's 180. He had seven strikes in that game. Here's a man that was so helpful to us. We thank him, Henry DeVries, Vice President of Communications, IOF Foresters. Thank you, Henry. So here in Markham, Ontario, Bo, let's look at the size of the field at 160 and the top 24. Well, it's actually the top 26 this week, Chris, because we had uh, a couple of players that were injured and have to drop out, and alternates went in. So look for your top favorite in the top 26. Brian Goble just had a sensational winner. He'll be in the General Tire Tournament of Champions next week, as will Norm Duke. The beef boss is on a roll. And you're going to see the line goes down to 26 players. Normally 24 qualify for match play. However, because of the two injuries, we had two alternates go in. They split the money with the men they replaced. And now coming up, 26, Kevin McGurk. And next week, it's the General Tire Tournament of Champions in Fairlawn, Ohio, lovely suburb of Akron. Our 14th and final stop for 1994 here on ABC Television. Handshake for the semifinal game. 42 championships between the two pros. 21 titles for Marshall Holman, to whom you're looking. And the same for Pete Weber, who has two victories today. Number one and two in all-time professional bowling semifinal match. <laughs> Stubborn four. Pete Weber has won his matches by keeping the ball in play, not getting the big open frames and letting his opponent defeat themselves. Fair for Pete Weber. Now, first time today in competition, you get a look at 39-year-old Marshall Holman. 21 titles, PBA Hall of Famer. Not a bad shot shoot now the shoot he's been uh, having some trouble getting the the big power but Holman absolutely a little shorter with his backswing than we normally see but everything in perfect position I believe fundamentally for power accuracy arm swing and approach the best I've ever seen articulate he bubbles and here you see the all-time earnings leaders. Not much difference. If Marshall should win today and Pete lose this game they're playing now, Marshall would regain the number one spot because it's 43,013 for losing this game. A little arithmetic, $18,307 difference, and that's American dollars, not Canadian. <laughs> the Marshall Holman that we've gotten to know from Medford, Oregon. Last win was in Venice, Florida in 1988. He's been on 17 telecasts since his last win. 
Weber up near the top all week long, 42 games, 18 qualifying, 24 finals, and he's defeated two opponents. This is the semifinal. Weber just out of time on that particular shot. His arm got a little bit away from his body. He cut right across. Look at he cut across his body instead of getting it out near the third arrow. It was close to the fourth arrow. Never gave it a chance. The 3 6 10. Now, Pete Weber on the right hand lane is playing right around the between the third and fourth arrows. And on this lane here, he's trying to get the ball right around the third arrow and you slide in this zone and use a little bit less speed because this lane is tighter. Twelve strikes coming into this semifinal match, Pete Weber. And there is the first of this game. Marshall Holman defeated Pete Weber in the 42nd final game last night was an exciting 250 game. Let's see what happens today. Marshall takes a 13 in lead. Besides his great natural ability, Holman has two things I think he does as well as anybody I've ever seen play the game. Number one, he keeps his head nice and steady. There's no bobbing up and down. And number two, he has the golden arm swing always in line with his target. He opens the right shoulder, the right hip, but they're always parallel to his arm swing and to the target line. He has a 13-pin lead, can make it 23. All but a seven. Four handicap golfer. Weber has a handicap of nine. Here's that real good swing. Doesn't catch all the lift. But once again, a game played with a round ball, i.e. bowling, is 95% accuracy. Holman put the ball in play, and he gets away with an easy spare. Okay, our semifinal game. Got a third way through. A 12-pin lead by Marshall Holman. Toronto home is... Uh, Toronto is home to Casa Loma, a majestic landmark. It's the legacy of Canadian financier, Sir Henry Mill Pilat. This is the round room. Can't corner him there, can you? And this is a conservatory. Continental tires in a torture test. Advanced technology in high performance tires. Conti Sport Contact. Continental General Tire. Quality tire manufacturer and sponsor of the PBA. You're deep in REM sleep, dreaming the big dreams. Because as Freud said, all men are great in their dreams. Suddenly, you don't feel so great anymore. You'll do the big things later. You hit the snooze bar. You hit the snooze bar. You hit the snooze bar. You hit the shower. You start soaping up with Ghost. <laughs> Ghost is rock fuel for the senses. Ghost is a big bowl blast off that turns you back into a human dynamo. Ghost, the eye opener. Undefeated Kennedy McKinney captured his world title with a stunning come from behind knockout. Now the championship rematch on ABC's Wide World of Sports, next. We're looking at Alessandra Scarpitti, whose dad is mayor of Markham, Ontario, Canada. There's dad, Mr. Mayor. And the leading man in the average department, too, is Walter Ray Williams, Jr., 226. Here he is. Thanks, Chris. I'm here with Mike. Uh, he's the all-time uh, money leader without a title. You're going to have to bowl one of the all-time money leaders. How's it looking out there? Well, they're both great, great players, but uh, I'm just going to have to bowl my own game. I'm just going to bowl myself 10, 10 frames and see what happens. Well, you bowled great yesterday, especially last night, so I think if you take that strategy, you'll be right there. I think so, too. Oh, and then came a scout.
Weber gets a great break. It'll probably be the three pin off the right sideboard. There it goes to the sideboard and takes out the four. Unusual pin action. He puts Marshall Holman in arrears by eight. Well, you're entitled to one mistake every championship round game. Marshall's got his, gotten his out of the way. Make the 4-7. Forget about it. Just get over in here. Bounce. Get these two out. Forget about bouncing it out. And get back on with the business of throwing some strikes. Now, here's a key frame for Marshall Holman. A great player like... Marshall doesn't go into a slump physically. He goes into a slump mentally. He needs a good frame or two here for his confidence to realize that he is still one of the best in the world. Two five for Marshall Holman, whose um, most recent TV was fourth seed, and he finished fourth in the AC Delco. Slides by on the left-hand lane. The tighter of the two lanes leaves the 2-5. Has a different spare-making technique, which has worked for him. He throws a top spin shot. Watch this. Cuts the hook way down. Ooh. Marshall's hand just comes right over the top of the ball. That's an ineffective roll, and that's what you need to make spares. But he's opened the door for Pete Weber. Three in a row. And take a 32-pin lead. Six frame. The wall shot. Weber sends the ball a little bit wider than we've seen during the other games. Had been the sideboard. Doesn't take out the seven. The 34th consecutive season of the professional bowlers throw will kick off Saturday, January 14th in 1995. crowd here in the Toronto area. The architecture in nearby Toronto has a look of the old and the new. Bowling is some people's idea of fun. Now, truck bowling, that's when things can get real interesting. But to do it right, you gotta have one of these. A 1994 Ford Ranger 4x4 complete with push-button four-wheel drive, a whopping four-liter V6, and a wide, powerful stance. Get a Ford Ranger 4x4 and go truck bowling. Come on. I just love league nights. He doesn't like power breakfast. He'll take a pass on poetry. Deep down, he's a grown-up Boy Scout. Way grown. He likes feeling clean and cool and very male. And he knows how to get there. Where have you guys been? Brute by Fabergé. Men are back. Monday, find out why the wisdom of a golf teacher is changing people's lives. It's a way to live. Meet Harvey Panic on day one, Monday. Marshall Holman, trailing by 21 pins, going against Pete Weber, who has two victories already today. Watch Holman steady all the way through with those head and shoulders. Oh. Watch Holman just nice and steady all the way through. It's one of the things that has made him so great over the years. I do believe the greatest players of all time have kept that head in a parallel, as parallel as they could, to their approach and the, the floor. As these great players get coaching, like Marshall uh, contributes his 
uh, success in the last four weeks, especially to Dave Smart, Dave Rosio, and John Jowdy. And Pete credits John Jowdy and uh, Billy Hall. Right now, Pete realizing he has a 22-pin lead. However, there's a potential 224 left in Marshall Holman. And that could squeeze Weber if he can throw some strikes. Boy, those last two oh, shots. Nice. Beautiful. Those were confident swings by Marshall Holman. He got a bad break in the eight frame where he left a solid eight. But he can still win this match and the tournament. Weber still has to perform to stay ahead of Holman. Eighth frame. Big double, big double for St. Anne, Missouri's Pete Weber. 31 year older with 21 titles. He is a triple crown winner. Defending champ. This is the shot that Weber wants. He's on the icy lane surface of the left-hand lane. Gives him a little room left of his target of margin, but he can't throw it too far right. This is to open a commanding lead. Mm. Demonstrative, Pete. See Weber just sawing all over that ball. Head pin's gonna do most of the damage. Oh, a big double for Marshall Holman. Next week we head to Akron for our season's grand finale. It's the most coveted title on the tour and the third jewel in bowling's triple crown. The General Tire Tournament of Champions, live next Saturday at 3, 2 Central, right here on ABC. Marshall Holman can still win this match. He must strike on the next two balls, and we that would force Weber to mark. Today is $43,000 to the winner of uh, the next game coming up. Next week, it's 65000 Marshall contemplating the score. He knows he has a chance. Take your time. Anything can happen. This is the sport of bowling. Don't take it for granted that Weber will mark. Stranger things have happened, but he must throw this strike. Pitch soft. Holman a pretty solid game. He left the 2-4 in the first frame, threw a double, and left a wall shot seven. One errant shot in the fifth. After that, other than this shot, it's bowled very well today. Good. Look at that. Converting the split. Like it's an everyday affair. What a great champion. Accuracy, mm. as we said, 95% of the game, and Holman is perfect on that spare. Weber just needs five balls. The winner. Marshall Holman, one of a kind. Pete Weber, soon to become one of a kind. Two demonstrative players. Pete now has a chance to break that 21 title uh, tie that they each share. And uh, it's going to be a tough opponent and a non-winner named Mike Edwards of Oklahoma City. Let's give Holman credit. He acquitted himself well. He's back, and he'll be a contender from now on. 108 television appearance for Marshall Holman. 108. Formidable foe in Pete Weber, who's going to roll out a 250 game. Pete has is in his 68th television appearance. Kim Weber. Final score of the semifinal game is this ABC Sports presentation. Now the professional bowling show will continue after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. All right, Chief. Open wide. Come on. Look, Daddy loves corn pops. See? Mmm. 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 Here it comes. 
The problem with a cereal that tastes like popcorn, only sweeter, is that it disappears like popcorn, only faster. Y'all finished? Good boy! Uh, he may want seconds. Kellogg's Corn Pops. It's hard to stop when it's Pops. If you demand more from an aftershave than alcohol burn, you gotta try alcohol-free sensitive with cooling sensates. It's proof aftershave doesn't have to hurt to work. Take the heat out of aftershave. Demand proof. Try alcohol-free sensitive from Old Spice. It's new. Introducing Thompson's Water Seal Ultra Waterproofer. It's better. Easy to see coverage. Dries clear. It's best. The best multi-surface waterproofer you can buy. Beats the competition hands down. New Thompson's Ultra. Not just better, best. Sunday, Jane Seymour risks everything she loves to do the right thing. I can't help you. Not on this. They want to stop me from telling the truth. They're going to have to kill me. Jane Seymour in a passion for justice. Sunday here on ABC. You've wanted one since the first time you saw one. A Dodge Intrepid. This exciting cab-forward sedan with a big six-cylinder air and dual airbags is Don Miller priced from $15,995. Prefer a high-quality sports sedan? An ES with full power options, four-wheel disc, ABS brakes, 16-inch wheels, cassette, and more priced at $19,875. Or for a smidgen more, add full leather, CD, or traction control. Plus, Don Miller offers super-friendly Intrepid lease programs. Don Miller Dodge, your LH Intrepid store, Madison. Blue Blocker Sunglasses. They're really different. My name is Geek. I put them on as a shocker. Man, I love these blue blockers. It's not like 3D, but it's got that effect where everything is so separated. They're great. Best sunglasses ever on. I've been telling everyone I know about these. Honest to goodness. So there you have it, folks, out there in TV land. Get you some glasses. They're sweeping the land. Remember what I said? Now I'm a hip hopper. Yeah. Go get you some blue blockers. Mm. Blue Blocker Sunglasses are available at all Walgreens drug stores and Shopco stores. Rachel Kisco, tonight on Channel 27 News. Welcome to our studios in New York. I'm John Saunders. Back to bowling in just a moment. But first, a reminder, coming up next on Wide World of Sports, Beck's professional boxing from South Padre Island, Texas. The IBF World Junior Featherweight title fight. Undefeated Kennedy McKinney versus Welcome Nita, whose only loss was to McKinney in 1992. And the Wood Memorial Invitational, live from New York, a Kentucky Derby prep race featuring top three-year-old Go for Gin. It's all coming up on Wide World of Sports at 4.30 Eastern time, but right now, back to bowling. Talented Pete Weber, St. Anne, Missouri, has won three games, in the first against Kelly Kaufman, in the second against Amleto Monticelli, and then against the legend, Marshall Holman, where Pete had nine strikes, 256 to 210. So it's the championship match now coming up, and it'll be Pete Weber going against Mike Edwards, who's looking for his first championship. And all season long, we were looking for funny videos, amazing bits. So uh, this being our last opportunity, we have one today that I think you'll enjoy. It comes from Alton, Illinois, and a man named Scott Watson rolled an amazing 214 game throwing every shot between his legs he went to this style in memory he says of his late friend dale okay thank you for sending in your videos throughout the year may try it again in 1995. now trying their very hardest will be two great bowlers and i'm talking about mike edwards just the best at earning the money and yet to look, yet to get that first win. And of course, uh, Pete Weber, 21 championships. So we're going to learn more up close and personal on Mike Edwards of Oklahoma. I'm almost half American Indian, um, uh, almost half Irish. I'm a little French, but I show most of my American Indian. I'm Cherokee and Choctaw on Creek. He was in an all-Indian uh, Boy Scout troop, and they learned all the skills of, of scouting and uh, the Indian way, the Indian way of survival and uh, outdoors and all that. And he's been exposed to uh, a lot of the Indian culture, where we tried to see that he did. And uh, we're just very, very proud of him, of his accomplishments. Equally proud of Mike's accomplishments is his wife, Meg, who travels with Mike on tour. 
And not many wives can go out and appreciate what their husbands do or know what they do. Like if you go to the office, you can bring home office stories, but most of them are horror stories. You know, in this way, I can appreciate what Mike does, and he doesn't have to bring his work home. We can talk about it. And it's like, we do a lot of sharing. And he's like my best friend out on the tour. And we spend a lot of time together. Mike Edwards holds the dubious distinction of having the highest career earnings total without winning a title. He's come close several times, including his first finals appearance in 1985. His five top five finishes in 1991 have proven that Mike is ready. The only question is, when? I could win the next the next tournament I bowl. Uh, I try to win every week. I try to win every tournament that I bowl. It's not like I'm going out there trying to finish second. I mean, I want to win. I mean, I'm a competitive person. I like winning anything that I do. You know, it's just, uh, I just, I always, always say, you know, it's just, it, it's, it's going to happen. Things are going to happen, and uh, it's going to happen good for me, and I'm just, let's be patient and wait and see. There he is. Well liked. Lovely couple, Meg and Mike and his dad and uh, mom, Jim and Jean, whom I've known a long time. Proud representatives of the Indian nations in Oklahoma. And here he is with an opportunity as the top seed. One game against the mighty Pete Weber. First shot, Mike Edwards. Two, four, five. All right, not too bad. An aggressive shot. That's what I look for out of Mike Weber. It's not a protective type shot to saying, well, I just hope I bowl a good game. He's got to go out here and say, I don't care if I bowl 140. I want to win. And you have to be aggressive. He was on that shot. Imperative. He makes it the spare in the early going just to get off to a good start. All right, marking with a spare. Usually, Meg, his wife, travels with him, but she's back in Oklahoma because of work. I'm sure she's there watching. And uh, here now is Pete Weber. Three victories. Last game, 256 with nine strikes. Three six ten on the right lane. He kind of hangs in the thumb hole a little bit, turns the ball early, drifts high, gets a 3 6 10. So he gets his hand around the ball a little quickly, drifts high. He's had this spare a couple of times, has been perfect in making it today. Winner of this one match head to head, 43,000, the runner up 22 5. Marshall Holman took home a check for 13. Pete Weber still bowls league occasionally in the St. Louis area. 1991 league average of 237. I've known this young man all his life. He started bowling at age two. His per perfect first perfect game came at age 12. His first game ever in league. This is a club 300 bowl owned by Dr. Samuel or Simon Mock. Second year that we've come here for the IOF Foresters Bowling for Miracles Open. Spare up, second frame. Done with a great deal of confidence here in the championship game. Mike Edwards has switched to a five-step delivery a little more push away absolutely perfect position here he used to be bounced out at that position where he'd have to realign his swing gets it inside out he credits freddie borden the olympic coach and palmer falgren another one of his fellow olympic coaches of helping correct that from six to five he says he has more time at the line and that shot proved it match all even third frame Big double by Mike Edwards. Chris, that's a new Mike Edwards. I've never seen him aggressive. He's always been tentative in the early going. He's a powerful man physically. He can take Pete Weber and probably throw him across the bowling lane. But he's always been tentative out on the lanes, and I think that's what he needs to win, and he's shown it in the early going. Pete 
comes right back. So after three frames, we are level. We are even here in Markham, Ontario. Pull yourself, Mike Edwards, and that's what he's learned. Interesting sitting in Mike Edwards' positions, eyes closed, contemplating what he must do, and he hears the crowd go, oh, he wonders what happened to his opponent. It's a 10-pin for Weber. Okay, this is a championship match. Pete Weber trailing by only one. More to come. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Ladies' night, and there's a special on Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Oh no, it's Ted from Accounting. Split Fire earned a United States patent. Split Fire doesn't look like any other spark plug. And the patented Split Fire doesn't work like any other spark plug. Five extra horsepower by merely installing these plugs. Quicker in the quarter mile. A 4.8% gain in mileage. There's nothing like a split fire. You'll get more power and more mileage. Or your money back. Get the guaranteed split fire advantage at leading automotive stores from coast to coast. Indy cars roar into the streets of Southern California for a road course rumble. It's the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach Sunday here on ABC. And let's check out how Mike Edwards is playing the championship here. You can almost see the oil streaks. These are where the players have been rolling the ball. Mike is in this zone on this lane. And over here on the left-hand lane, Mike's a little bit farther in, just inside the third arrow. He's using loft and wrist action to control the pair. He leads by one fourth frame. Leaving a 10 pin on the right lane. My goodness, awfully, awfully good for a nine count. Watch this. The good loft, the angle that we spoke about, and he just launches the six around the ten. Mike Edwards attended Tulsa Junior College in Oklahoma, radio, television, film, toward a degree. And his father-in-law is a graduate of the University of Toronto, so he told Mike this week to go to St. Michael's Cathedral and pray for strength for this week. He has the strength, Chris. I know he can bench press 300, so it has to be intestinal strength and not physical as the match is even through four frames. Well, that is a different Mike Edwards. Big time shot, going from a six step delivery to five step, he has more room at the foul line to let the swing come through under pressure. That's always been his trouble, and right now it looks better than ever, but the match is still even. He has the big time foe, Pete Weber. And remember, this is Pete's fourth game on our live telecast from Markham, Ontario in the Toronto area. Weber taking a re-rack on the left-hand lane. Scoreboard tells a story. All even. Championship game. Edwards trying to win his first title. The money. Duke winning three titles this year. Who can forget the ragman with his perfect mm -hmm. game? Dead-eye solid. Romek. The, part of the Kansas connection there. Four and five. All these players will be going to the general tire next week. So uh, we're getting some 10 pins here in the championship game by both players. This time it was Weber on the left lane. Continuing to mark.
Match even, Edwards a chance to take the lead for the first time, six frame. Shot, six frames, Mike Edwards has bowled like a champion. The match will be even with a spare. Tournament leader. Grew up in Tulsa, now living in Oklahoma City. Though well, another of his big rooters in Oklahoma City is in St. Anthony's Hospital, the Yankee great. Ali Reynolds, and we wish him a speedy recovery. And once again, your son, Ted Shankel. They're in Goshen Hospital. Hoping he's feeling better. You know, he fell asleep last week and didn't hear your plug. Well, uh, probably a lot of people fall asleep <laughs> while they're listening to me. <laughs> However, you can't fall asleep in this championship match. A lot of money at stake, over 40000 a trip to the Tournament of Champions for this man if he can win his first title. Four frames left. A very deliberate professional, leaving the 10 pin on the left lane. You'll see the clock superimposed on your video screen. Tension in that face, and lots of it in Mike Edwards' face. a spare working he's shooting the seventh frame and there's a one pin difference beat in the lead We've seen quite often today the ball staying light on the head pin, the two pin being one of the combination spares. This match is even. Championship match in Las Vegas. Pete Weber, wide open split. Donated the match to Walter Ray Williams Jr. Championship mm. match, Quaker State. Did the same thing for Hoskins. Has he done it again for Mike Edwards? We'll see in three frames. Three victories this afternoon. Chris, this is where Mike Edwards absolutely must grab the bull by the horns. He has to slam the door on Weber. You give him a chance and Weber will come back. Here we go. Another pesky 10. Don't know what to say. One run round object hits another round object, i.e. the center of the pins. They don't always react identically the same. Nothing good has happened Edwards' way so far, except he has a 15-pin lead. Two frames left. The Quaker State, 1985. Edwards came to the same position against Mike Durbin. Looked like he had the match secured, struck in the ninth, and left a disastrous 4-9 split in the tenth. Right now, it would be very good if he could set up the strike in the ninth because I'm sure he'll strike in the tenth if he needs it. Two, four, five, seven on the left lane. Here's what happens. If he makes it, he maintains his 11-pin lead. If he misses it, they are dead tied. 
Right now, he has to get the ball in this zone. He just has to kick out. The seven is the key pin without chopping off the five. A very difficult spare under any circumstances. However, championship match, even more important. Just gets it. What a superb shot. Superb. Mike what? Edward looking for the first win. That's the thing. The importance of this spare, as you see the five pin just getting tilted off its center axis to complete the spare, is that Weber cannot shut out Edwards. Edwards throws three strikes. There is nothing Weber can do. Right now, Weber needs two strikes to get back in the match. There's one. Memories just off that disastrous split that. Uh, well, we've known him since birth, Bo, and it destroyed him, but here he is right back. Weber has to strike to stay in the match. If he strikes here, there'll be only a one-pin difference as they go into the final frame. Has a little trouble on the left hand lane in the eighth. He gets a big split in the tenth. The best he could do is 192. Mike Edwards is just going to need a mark for his first title. Right. Once again, Pete Weber with a strike finishes 192. Okay, 192 after three victories prior. Runner up 22.5, winner 43,000. Case of this man, there's something more important. Needs a mark for his first title. Here we go. The Cherokees, Choctaws, and Creek are proud of this man. It's a tough break for Pete Weber, but it's the first win ever for Mike Edwards. 192 for Pete Weber. And we'll be back with more following this from Markham, Ontario. Could we ask you a personal question? Is your mouth really clean? That's oh, clean enough. Clean? I brush. Is your mouth clean enough to kiss someone? Kind of kiss. Uh, well, I, I brush. If you want your whole mouth clean, you want Scope. Because while brushing cleans teeth, Scope gets to the hard to reach places to kill millions more germs than brushing alone and leaves your whole mouth feeling cleaner. Scope Clean is kissably clean, the best kind of clean your mouth can be. Okay, two scoops of raisins make Kellogg's Raisin Bran taste so good, people forget it's good for you. What do you think? It's delicious. And? It, uh, tastes good? That's the same reason. He stole my answer. And, and it's not an answer. I, I agree with them. It tastes great. Okay, okay, okay. You got the first part right. Kellogg's Raisin Bran tastes good, but... Good, good for us! <laughs> there are two reasons to eat Kellogg's Raisin Bran. The taste. And? You know, I'm always teaching bowlers how to put fingers into the shot, not just the ball. But you can also use your fingers to save money. If you're 50 or over, just call 1-800-4-CHOICE, and you can save 30% at choice hotels like quality, comfort, clearing, and sleep. 30%. Now that's what I call aiming for the pocket. Travelers 50 and over save 30% at quality, comfort, clearing, and sleep hotels. Do you have fresh fruit salad, yogurt? Okay, what vegetables do you have? French fried, home fried, and mashed. Do you have anything that's good for me? I got Tums. If I don't eat your food, I don't need the Tums. But you do. Tums has calcium. Do these? No. They have aluminum and magnesium. Of these, only Tums helps knock out heartburn. Ow! And gives you calcium. Something my body needs anyway. What the heck? Give me the burger with everything, including the Tums. Calcium-rich Tums. Yes, with a 203 to 192 victory, Mike Edwards, first championship, nets him 43,000. And there he is from Oklahoma. The check from Bob Fagan. I, 
O.F. Forrester is executive vice president, and the trophy coming from the mayor of this suburb of Toronto, Markham, Frank Scarpitti. So it's congratulations to Mike Edwards. See you next week at the General Tire Tournament of Champions. So long. been brought to you by Kellogg's with good taste, nutrition, and value the best to you each morning from Kellogg's. Quality, comfort, clarion, and sleep hotels. And Scope. Scope Clean is kissably clean. The best kind of clean your mouth can be. Coming up next, ABC's Wide World of Sports presents a championship rematch on Beck's Professional Boxing. Undefeated Kennedy McKinney defends his crown against former champ Welcome Nita live Plus, Kentucky Derby hopefuls take off in the Wood Memorial Invitational. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports. Recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. Hi, I'm Craig T. Nelson, and if you're a sports fan like I am, you won't want to miss Ride with the Wind. Craig T. Nelson stars in a powerful, dramatic role. When can I get back on a bike? With the help of a sick boy, a man changed his life. He learned to live, love, and win.